Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Today is Sabbath, April 27, and you are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. My name is Tim Rumsey. Pastor David Salazar is with me as uh, most days, and we look forward to beginning a new uh, week of lessons together as we look at wise words for families. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for your many blessings to us today. Many we are aware of, many more we probably are not aware of. Uh, we have not stopped to thank you for. We'd like to do that right now. We also thank you for the uh, blessing and privilege of opening your word. And we ask that as we do this, you would send your Holy Spirit and guide and direct us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, David, uh, I don't know about you, but I'd like to hear some wise words for my family. Uh, do you feel that need as well? Absolutely, Tim. I mean, I don't think that anyone that loves their family will want to miss the opportunity of learning from someone else, from being um, advised, counseled. And I think that oftentimes, as, as an experience I, in my own life, uh, when you need the most counsel, we sometimes don't do that. You know, we kind of try to figure things in our own or, or on our own. And that's how we end up making bigger, bigger mistakes. So I believe that we should be always wise in seeking counsel and listening to those, specifically the Word of God, who gives us the best counsel there is. That's right. You know, uh, there are, of course, many wonderful things about the Bible. Uh, one of those great things is that it gives practical advice. Uh, it's not just filled with uh, theological ideas. Um, it's not just filled with history. It's not just filled with inspiring biographies. It has all of these things. But it also includes a lot of practical advice, and much of that practical advice is found in the book of Proverbs. And that is where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time this week as we focus on counsel from the book of Proverbs uh, for families. Now, uh, Proverbs was written by Solomon, the son of David. And uh, if you remember the story about how God approaches Solomon very early in his reign, he uh, offers to give Solomon anything that he desires. And uh, Solomon makes a very wise choice, doesn't he? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, uh, he doesn't ask for wealth or riches or power or a long life. Instead, he asks for wisdom. And uh, God gives him that. And as a result, we have the book of Proverbs here. Uh, now, of course, Solomon didn't follow his own advice consistently throughout his life. And uh, we have that sad record of how he fell into a lot of sin, primarily because of his many wives, <clears throat> which uh, true, probably many levels of mistakes that he made <laughs> in that respect. Um, but even from that, as he comes back to God by the end of his life, um, that perspective of where he's been and where God brings him back to uh, enables him to give some pretty good warnings uh, about uh, making the same mistakes that he did. We'll look at those uh, tomorrow, I guess, on Sunday. Right. The, uh, yeah, you know, the book, of, the book of Proverbs teaches a lesson that, uh, that I've not, I often have not seen, or I've seen, I'm sorry, I'd rather, I've seen happening in many people uh, that have experienced, that have been able to teach and even preach wonderful things, but they forget where they are to depend on the Lord and they kind of go in their own counsel, in their own th thinking, instead of depending constantly on the Lord. And eventually you see them departing from the truth. And that is what we saw in Solomon. He became too wise for his own good. In other words, he sort of set himself to think that it was his own personal wisdom that brought the, you know, the blessings to the, to the people of God or to the nation of Israel. And that's when he deviated. And of course, he followed into the many wives, which was against his own counsel. And, you know, he went all these things that he did against his, the counsel that he had given him. So it is a solemn thought and a warning to us that we do not follow on our own wisdom, but to really depend on the Lord and depend on, on, God, on wise and godly counsel. 
That's so anyhow, uh, uh, you asked me to read uh, education page 135. It says here, there is no branch of legitimate business for which the Bible does not afford an essential preparation. Its principles of diligence, honesty, thrift, temperance, and purity are the secret of true success. These principles, as set forth in the book of Proverbs, constitute a treasury of practical wisdom. Where can the merchant, the artisan, the director of men in any department of business find better maxims for himself or for his employees than are found in these words of the wise men? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. In all labors, there is a prophet, but the talk of the lips tender only to penury. The soul of the little sluggard desired and hath nothing. I mean, how many times we have seen that, we you know? I mean, it's so mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, if uh, people that want a lot of things, but they're lazy or they don't have the diligence to work, to be able to be productive, ends up in nothing. The, drunk one, the, drunk, the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. A tale bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattered with his lips." And uh, one that we can always also remember is he that had knowledge spread his words, but every fool will be meddling. So here we have a few of these counsels that we have. I mean, there's, if we go through the next page, there's plenty more, but I believe that these are, you know, jewels, precious jewels of wisdom that we should really consider, uh, specifically as we live in this, in the days where confusion seems to come upon everyone. I mean, everybody has an opinion, everybody has an own thinking, but How many of us are really willing to say, what, what does the word of God, you know, or, you know, tell me about this or how should I proceed in my life, uh, you know, today? And I think that's kind of where we see Tim people failing in life, in marriage, in their homes. There is no truly disregard for the spirit of, you know, of God through the word of God to speak to us specifically to practical things. That's um, right. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Do you want me to continue reading more? <laughs> Or what, you, you know, I, should we I think we'll, analyze we'll more? dip back into a few more of the Proverbs uh, probably mm -hmm. before we're done today. It's interesting in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 32, uh, it says there that Solomon spoke 3,000 Proverbs. Now, I have not counted how many of those are in the book of Proverbs, but I don't think it's all of them. <laughs> And so... There was a wealth of wisdom, as you just said, David, that came from God, not from Solomon himself. And as long right. as Solomon followed that wisdom that God gave him, what a blessing it was uh, for him, uh, you know, for his family and for the nation as well. Uh, very interesting statement from the book Prophets and Kings, uh, page 34, speaking of Solomon and his Proverbs. We read there, it was the wide dissemination of these principles and the recognition of God as the one to whom all praise and honor belong that made Solomon's early reign a time of moral uplift as well as of material prosperity. And that hmm. statement just really, really grabbed me because, you know, these uh, nuggets of wisdom that we have in the book of Proverbs, through them, God wants to make a, a change in our lives. And mm -hmm. Primarily, it's this moral uplift, the restoration of God's character uh, within us. But, you know, as we do that, as we follow his principles for living, very often uh, that spills over into other areas of our lives as well. Uh, material prosperity can be one of those. It's not always guaranteed, uh, but it often happens that way, that as we follow God's principles for uh, dealing with other people, for uh, conducting our business, his blessings mm -hmm. can then follow as well. And we certainly see that in Solomon. I mean, he became not only the wisest king, but incredibly rich, incredibly powerful. And at least for the early part of his reign, there was peace as well. Israel really had no enemies that were threatening them at all. And right. we see and that Tim, God you, definitely you, is a blessing. You know, Tim, ahead, and Tim. I wanted to just sort of say that It is important to to see that Solomon, you know, as he was re receiving this wisdom of God and he was speaking to maybe his friends, his family about, you know, what he had received and he started writing these Proverbs. It is interesting to see that he makes an emphasis in remembering that it's not the wisdom to 
to be used only for yourself per se. It's, it's about building a family, be, being able to be used in the context of a family setting. I mean, what good does it do if you have all the wisdom, but you know, you don't really put it into practice in your inner circle. A lot of times we, and I feel that the reason why a lot of our churches are not growing spiritually or have a lot of failings in, in the churches because people, you know, come to church to share a lot of things, a lot of good things and ideas, but in their practical, in their homes, in their lives, they don't really live them. They don't really apply them. And so when you come and share just intellectual knowledge, but not an experimental experimental knowledge by experience, it really becomes just a uh, sounding brass sort of thing. You know, it doesn't really become a powerful uh, testimony, an element of knowing by experience what it is. And that's why, for example, in Proverbs, in the first chapter, we have verse eight that he tells this, it says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bringing back the concept of the family, it's the you know place where you need to have a, you know, that experience of learning, of wisdom, of where you have to really seek counsel is it starts with your own family, with your parents, with your children. So uh, I right. just wanted to bring that up, you know. And there's a call there for both parents and for children. Certainly parents um, need to fulfill their responsibility to uh, share the wisdom that God has given them, through, either through their own experience or from the Bible. But children have a responsibility as well, don't they, to listen to that instruction. And the right. uh, counsel there in Proverbs 1.8 uh, really is more directly to the child. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Forsake not the law of thy mother. And so mm-hmm. all members of the family um, are blessed if they take this counsel. And, you know, the lesson brings out uh, what I thought was a, a good point, and that is that Proverbs – as a whole, as a book, is really cast as a family document. We just read Proverbs 1.8, uh, and this idea recurs several times later, Proverbs 4.1, and also the last chapter in Proverbs 31, verse 1, where this wisdom from God is designed to be passed on to the next generation. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, in the life right. of Abraham, the book of Genesis tells us that that is a large reason why God chose Abraham, not only because Abraham himself would be faithful, that certainly was important, but also because God knew that Abraham would teach his children how to serve and love and obey God. And so, you know, this is what God is looking for. It's what he's always looked for, is uh, families, men and women, uh, who will make that decision to follow the principles of God's word in their own lives but also to teach their children how to do this. And, uh, you know, if we could just do this faithfully from generation to generation, this world would be a lot better place, wouldn't it? Exactly. That's uh, right. God promises that he can can bring us into this experience if we ask him, if we trust in him. Amen. Well, we're just about out of time today. Uh, I hope that you've been blessed by the time that we have spent in God's word. Just a reminder that you can go online to our website at pathwaytoparadise.org. Follow the links to the deeper uh, page there on our website where you can hear uh, this recording today as well as all of our previous recordings, uh, earlier uh, studies. You can also find our online blog and study guides if you are teaching the lesson or just want to be better prepared for Sabbath school. Um, you can read that online or download the study guide and teacher helps. Thank you for being with us today, and we look forward to studying with you tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.